All right. Sounds good. Sounds a question. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Wellbeing Wednesday. This is a monthly segment that shows child care providers and caregivers like yourselves simple ways to support your own well-being, because taking care of ourselves is, in fact, taking care of others. Whether you're an early childhood educator, a director, a parent, or someone who just feels like a parent some days, that's definitely me at times, you're sure to pick up actionable tidbits and advice here that will help support your overall well-being and get you back to feeling like yourself. So I'm your host, Susanna Creed with Be Well Care Well Arkansas, a curricular concepts program that's all about supporting the well-being of our child care providers. Um, so we'll kind of jump into this month's theme. We are in March, y'all, and it is National Nutrition Month. So we are going to talk about probably everyone's favorite topic, which is food. Um, this year's theme, according to eatright.org, is fuel for the future. So it highlights the importance of fueling our bodies at every age and eating with sustainability in mind. So sustainable eating is choosing foods that are helpful for the planet and our bodies. So this is a fun thing to maybe play with throughout March and see how can I be sustainable for myself and the planet with what I'm eating. So I'm really excited to introduce our guest today. We have Dr. Dustin Morris, who is an associate professor in health sciences at the University of Central Arkansas, AKA UCA, and serves as the department chair for health at the University of Maryland Integrative Sciences. Oh no, I think I might've just messed it up. Dustin, you might have to <laughs> correct me That's on okay. that one. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of words that, that really doesn't have any bearing on today's conversation, right? <laughs> okay. Basically, you it's, do a lot of wonderful. Yeah. Okay, perfect. At integrative health programs. That is yeah. it. Okay, awesome. Well, we are super glad to have you here today. So we're going to dive right in and we're going to just really start off with a big question that we were talking about before we hopped on this of one of the big questions that you get in regard to health and wellness coaching. Why is it so hard to modify our nutrition intake? and our habits. It's so difficult sometimes, and we're just gonna go right in and charge there. So I'm gonna pose that really difficult question to you and kind of kick off our conversation today. Yeah, you don't even let us warm up. You just get right into nope. the tough ones, right, Suzanne? Right in there, right in yeah, there. Yeah, you know, I, I, that's, a, that's a really good question. As a health behaviorist, I think when we look at the, the struggle that we have around choosing healthy dietary habits, right? It is hard, it's hard. It's hard for the best of us. And what I mean by the best of us, it's those people that we have in our lives that we know that we think, oh, wow, I wish that I could eat like they do, or they're so good at making choices about good you know, dietary habits. The reason I bring that up is because it's hard for them too, right? It, it's, it's eating healthy is a choice and a decision, and it takes intentionality, and it, it takes a lot of internal conversations, a lot of mm -hmm. mental awareness. Uh, and to some degree, you know, a, a, a lot of being able to say to yourself at certain period of times, I'm going to make a different choice, right? I'm not going to choose today to have that ice cream, to have the pie, but I'm going to choose a fruit or I'm going to choose a vegetable. And I'll be honest, that's hard for me. I mean, we, we know through research that the, the, song, the tongue has, you know, sensors in it that really appreciates the uh, flavors and tastes of salt and sugar and fats. Um, and so even though we know that those foods aren't good for us in large quantities, our body still craves some of that. And so it's very difficult for us not to want to choose those types of foods altogether. I, you know, I think the other thing that we think about, Susanna, when we think about why is it hard, uh, look at our society. I mean, you know, we, we were having this conversation before we started our meeting today, mm -hmm. our, our conversation. It's, you know, in, in Conway, you can drive down Dave Ward and everybody would agree that there's there's tons of fast food restaurants on that yeah. on that street, right? And so we're we're constantly inundated as a society with choices about dietary patterns that aren't good for us, right? Uh, it, it, if you go into a grocery store, a large portion of where the groceries are contained in a store, there's more processed items than there are fresh items, mm -hmm. right? And so we're faced with this choice of making, you know, a healthy choice, but we don't always have healthy options. Um, so there's some insecurities there as it comes to, to food choices. And, you know, we're fortunate in Conway and some of other areas in Arkansas where we have better choices, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we do have better options of the foods that we can choose from, but there are certainly lots of places in Arkansas and other states across the country where there are food deserts and there's food insecurities where they don't have the same options and availability of healthy choices. So all mm -hmm. of that combined is really what makes it so hard. It's not always the individual saying, well, I'm just not choosing healthily. That We do have to ha have self-responsibility in that. But we also have to realize that we live in a construct that really doesn't support healthy eating habits. It's I always say when I work with clients before, you're really cutting across the grain of your co social construct when you're yeah. trying to make a healthy food choice, right? You, you really are. And that's that's difficult to do. And I think that's one of the major reasons it becomes so difficult for everybody uh, to stay on a healthy dietary pattern. Yeah. And also, personally, I'm really glad that you mentioned salt and fat before sugar, because I think a lot of times we associate, you know, oh, it's sugar, it's sugar, which don't get me wrong. Sugar is very easily addictive <coughs> chemically in the body and also is one of those big, easy um, flavors that we want a lot of. And it's in so much of our food here in the US. However, it's also like the salty, fatty food. So sometimes I'll be like, well, I don't eat any sugar, but it, maybe it's the salt intake or it's the greasiness. Like I don't really crave a lot of sugar, but I do crave the other things. So I'm glad that you kind of brought that into our conversation and into the forefront. And, you know, for those who maybe don't understand or who haven't heard the term before, can you maybe explain a little bit about when you say a food desert, what does that mean? Yeah. So a food desert or food insecurities is where you live in a place. So let's, let's take areas within the, the, our, our state here. So if we move into areas where there's not a lot of affluency, there's not a lot of money, there's not a lot of options for more than one type of grocery store, uh, you're only going to be able to make the choices that are offered by that particular store. So we can go into some of our very small rural areas in Arkansas, and they don't have Kroger, right? They might not have a Walmart. And so in order for them to get the food choices that they may desire, they have to get in their car. And many times drive miles and miles and miles to have those same opportunities. You know, golly, in, in, in uh, you know, Conway here, we have what are called, you know, uh, community supported agriculture. So like mm -hmm. CSA, so you can go and you can buy fresh fruits and vegetables every week if you want. Uh, so, you know, those options are available to everybody. And then unfortunately, we also know that a lot, a lot of times those options are much more expensive. So, I've had conversations before with the clients. It's like, okay, well, if you're on a budget, right? And you do mm -hmm. live in a place where there's not lots of options. Maybe you've only got one small little grocery store. How do you go into those communities and be able to make choices about foods that are healthier than other choices you'd want to make about foods? And we can certainly talk about that too. That, so <laughs> one of the things that I know, and I, I don't know if it's like a common knowledge or if it's just kind of this unspoken thing that everybody knows in a lot of those rural places, that's where you'll see a dollar general, right? Like that right. is basically the grocery store. Exactly. So I think what might be helpful and also for any of you who are watching one, if you have uh, questions or if you have comments, anything about nutrition, please feel free to bombard us in the chat. Um, and we'll kind of answer those as we go. And if we don't have time to answer them during our conversation, we'll be able to comment back afterwards as well. Um, so that's one piece. But two, you know, if you're watching and you're like, hey, Dollar General or Dollar Tree or <laughs> any of those are like my grocery store, I'd love to hear in the comments because, um, and also, do you prefer Dustin or Dr. Morris? I actually never asked I'm, you. I'm flexible. You can use my name. It's perfect. All right. Perfect. Awesome. So your name is in there either way. Perfect. Names are important. So uh, Dustin, I would love to hear your thoughts on, say somebody, the closest grocery store that they have is a Dollar General. They're yeah. not They're not actually going to be able to either get into a car and drive long distances. What, what options could they do given the environment that they're in? What are maybe some small things that they can do yeah. personally to yeah, kind of that, cut that, across the grain? Yeah, that's a great question, Susanna. And, you know, it's interesting because I've always said when, when I teach my classes is sometimes we have to pick the lesser of two evils, right? We, we don't always have a perfect scenario. So mm -hmm. we might not always have the option for organic foods. We might have the option for organic foods, but we don't have the, the budget that allows us to eat organic foods. So there's a lot of these things. And so then the question becomes, well, if I don't have availability for that type of food, or mm -hmm. I don't have the money for that type of food, what are the, the next best choices? What are the things that we can do that might be as good as we can get it? Well, one of the things that I would tell you, so if we're looking at, and it, it, I have to reflect because I, I certainly apologize, I don't shop at a Dollar General. 
right? So mm -hmm. I have to think, but I've been in them. So I have to think about the way they're laid out and what they have available. Uh, and please, if there's anybody in the, today's conversation, please feel to correct me if I'm wrong here. But I think for the most part, when we think about Dollar General, most Dollar Generals do not have fresh, fr fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, a lot of mm -hmm. times they will have a small dairy section, a closed in glass a section where there'll be a small dairy section there, maybe yep. with some processed meats. Usually it's not healthy mm -hmm. meats. It's going to be like bologna or hot dogs or things that are more processed in nature. Mm -hmm. So when you start to go into that store, you start to think about, okay, well, what would be my better choices? Well, obviously the less, the least amount of processing that the food goes through, the healthier the choice. Okay. Okay. So for example, um, fresh green beans are the best, right? Mm -hmm. They're fresh, they're, they're raw, they're on the display in a vegetable counter. That's the best. The next would be frozen. The next would be frozen canned. over canned. Yes. That, it's yeah. funny because we actually got a question in the chat about that. Could you compare fresh produce versus canned yes. as like nutritional value? And anyways, Correct. it just went perfectly. So I don't want to interrupt you because you were yeah. talking about and, kind and of that's a great step. question. You know, and so um, I, I'll be let, I'll tell a story. When I was in my grad program, you know, I was on a limited budget. I, there were times that, I mean. Oh, that ramen little, diet is real. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, it is real. <laughs> so the funniest story that I have is when I was in my undergraduate program, I didn't grow up in an affluent family. And uh, there were a couple of nights where I was having hot sauce mixed with bacon bits and tuna. <laughs> you know, so you All get, right, yeah. right, right. You get creative. But yeah, so when we think about, and, and that's real for lots of people, right? So we have to think about. Hey, if I only have X amount of money that I can spend because I have to figure out how I'm keeping the lights on, how I'm keeping the door to my house, you know, unlocked for my family, and I got to put food on the table, what are my best options? And, and how can I create a diet that's healthy as possible? And so, yeah, when we're looking at it, obviously, fresh is number one, frozen is going to be number two, and then canned is going to be number three. And the reason that we see that is because when we look at canned stuff, it's going to have a higher rate of sodium in it right? There's a that lot more preservatives and additives that are going to be put in the can than in things that are frozen because a lot of that stuff is going to be flash frozen. It's frozen very quickly and it's put in there. So uh, yes, if you go into a store and you have the option of fresh and you can afford fresh, go fresh. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you don't have that option or you can't afford it, the next best thing is going to be uh, obviously you're frozen. And if you can't afford that, the next best thing is canned. And I will tell you this, a can of green beans is better for you and healthier for you than a bag of potato chips, right? That is so true. again, well, again, that's why I said when we look at the, the the lesser of two evils, because I will always have somebody saying, "Well, but you know, those aren't really the best vegetables for you." Well, that's that's true. We can have that conversation, but it's certainly better than a bag of potato chips, even though potato chips are made out of potatoes. They're processed foods, and so they're a mm -hmm. lot more processed than a can of green beans or a can of corn or a can of, you know, like uh, kidney beans or lima beans or any of that canned stuff uh, is certainly going to be a whole lot better. So when you think about a store, you start to look at that availability. The other thing you want to look at is processed meats, right? Trying to yeah. stay away from a processed meat like canned meats, uh, you know, hot dogs, hamburgers, unless they're, uh, for example, like if they're 100% beef, uh, mm -hmm. that's okay. Canned fish, though, is very different. So huh. if you have an option of canned fish, and a lot of people don't have a palate for this, uh, but canned salmon, canned tuna, canned sardines. Sardines are actually very, very, very dense in protein and very uh, various micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So they're really good. A lot of people don't have a palate for it though, right? So it, it all kind of depends on what you're willing to do, but you want to be able to go into those stores and look for the things that are going to give you the better options. Another piece of advice I'd like to give is, in larger grocery stores, for example, like Walmart or Kroger mm -hmm. or uh, Hy-Vee, whatever's available in your area, when you think about the grocery section of that store, most of the healthy foods are always on the perimeter. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> shop the perimeter. Don't shop the aisles. Mm -hmm. The aisles are full of processed foods. The perimeter is full of fresh foods for the most part. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then if you get into the frozen section, again, frozen vegetables are going to be a lot better for you than like a can or, or anything like that. But that's just another little tidbit that I give. It's like, Hey, if you can <laughs> shop that perimeter, because that perimeter is going to have those healthier food choices for you. 
Yeah. And what I found, at least like for me, is sometimes not going down the aisle or just like not even because a lot of times, you know, like you said, you're going against the grain of society and what you're used to and your, how you grew up and your own palate by going down that. If it's like certain aisles that I know I or my family do not need any of, which is like in our house, we just happen to not eat candy or cookies really. So I just don't go down that. I might go down the cereal aisle. I definitely grab my peanut butter. You know, I do other things, but certain aisles, I just don't even go down them to tempt myself because that helps me make that personal choice. But yeah, definitely the perimeter I've heard. And it sounds like also, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but maybe, you know, say you have the fresh vegetables, but that's out money wise. Um, you have the frozen, but the frozen ones, for whatever reason, because of inflation and then supply change and everything, maybe those are much more expensive than the canned. But maybe if you're going to choose the canned options, look for low or no sodium added, no salt added. So if you have black beans and there's two that are like five cents difference, or maybe they're the exact same price, a lot of times they'll be the exact same price, but one has no salt added. And one doesn't say anything on it. So if you have to choose kind of the lesser of two evils, you know, because the salt content is so high, then you can say, okay, well, I'm going to make the best choice that I can in the situation, which is getting the no salt added black beans sort of thing. And beans also have a lot of that protein. So if your family has the type of palate where they really like meat, but maybe fresh meat isn't an option right now, or, you know, those finances, we have something in the chat that talked about, you know, a lot of families with the increase in their electricity bills, they've been doubling. They have the families are struggling to meet their needs. So maybe, you know, looking at okay, what are high protein frozen options? And if there's not really low sodium canned beans, and actually a lot of times the fresh bean or like the raw beans, where you basically just soak them in water, those are cheaper yeah. and you get more and it's high protein. So yeah that can be another option as well. Cause yeah, the meats, I mean, even for us, like we're struggling with that. Cause I'm like, Ooh, yeah, background yeah. beef is real expensive now. Yeah. So, and I mean, we like tofu, so that's kind of an option or we'll have like chickpeas in a lot of our food or beans, but maybe for those who fresh meat right now, isn't an option because <clears> of <throat> budget, but they are a meat eating family. What other kind of suggestions do you maybe have for somebody when they're trying to figure out what they can eat and what they can purchase. That's the best of the available possible options. Yeah. You know, and so th that's, that's a really tough question because I don't know that I have a best answer for that. You know, if you are a, a meat eating family, you can certainly look at meats based on cost. So typically mm -hmm. your beefs, uh, your prime cuts are going to be much more expensive than ground beef. Ground beef mm -hmm. is still going to be the cheaper option. And even then, it's going to be based up on the fat content within the beef. So as that fat content gets higher, the cost goes down. As the fat content goes down, the cost goes up, right? Um, so that's a big, uh, you know, kind of a difficult thing to, to, to deal with. Chicken is typically cheaper. Uh, mm -hmm. So you could go with chicken. There's nothing wrong with doing chicken. Uh, a lot of times what you said, Susanna, that I think we have to think about when we go to the store uh, we pay and we're willing to pay. And this is a, this is something that we don't really always want to address, but we're willing to pay extra price for convenience. It's cheaper to buy oh, a American whole chicken, lifestyle. <laughs> right. It's cheaper to buy a whole chicken than it is one that's already been processed and cut up in different quarters and shanks mm -hmm. before you, right? So buying the whole chicken, and this is the way I think about I'm I'm still I'm Gen X. So I still remember my grandmother and my grandfather and this is the way that they purchase food. You, she would buy a whole chicken and would prepare a whole chicken in the oven or, or in a crock pot and would serve it that way. We, we didn't get quarters or a drum sticks pre, you know, pre-cut. Mm -hmm. She did that work, right? And so there are ways that we can look at saving money. I am one of the things that, you know, when we think about meat, the other thing that we probably just don't have enough time for the conversation here is that we don't need a lot of meat in our diet. Um, and I know this is really hard for a lot of people, but we're not really designed to eat lots of meat. Uh, we know that higher intake of meat is, you know, related to more types of cancer, specifically like colorectal cancer, you know, gastrointestinal type of cancer. And it's because our bodies aren't really designed to process meat the way a real carnivore is designed to process meat. And we're not carnivores. Mm -hmm. We're herbivores. And, and somebody's always had this conversation with me and they say, well, 
well, how do you know that we're an herbivore? Well, if you take every other species of animal on the planet and you compare what a herbivore's mouth looks like to a carnivore's mouth, you're quickly going mm -hmm. to realize that we don't have a mouth full of teeth designed to eat meat. Our teeth are made to eat grains and vegetables. We only have two teeth in our mouth that are really sharp, the incisors, and that's mm -hmm. it. We only have two. It's different than a wolf or a coyote or a lion. We're not designed to process that. So oh, what sharp teeth you have, grandmother. <laughs> exactly. Right. So so that that becomes another thing that goes back to something that I talked about earlier in that we've been conditioned and trained to buy into the fact that we need these foods. I'm going to mm -hmm. shift the gear here for just a second. And if we <laughs> yeah. have people in the audience, I'm going to ask a question and then Ooh, I, I want you to, and, and I'm ask the audience a question and respond in the chat. Okay. So here's okay. the question. And feel free to answer this yourself, Susanna. Yeah. Okay. List two items, list two items that you would find on an all-American breakfast. List two Salad. items that you would find on an all-American breakfast. Take a shot at that. Two items that you would find. I'm gonna on wait, I'm gonna wait, wait for the chat to to blow up before I yeah. share my answer. Yeah, go ahead and let them get in the chat there. Bacon is one, eggs and bacon. How many people are, are, are putting in eggs and eggs. bacon? So far, we got through it. Bacon and sausage, eggs, and some sort of breakfast meat. Oh, those breakfast meats. They're lovely. Yeah. And that was going to be my thing, bacon and eggs. Okay. So let, me, no, so let me ask the next question. Why do we consider these items as an all-American breakfast? Now, you don't have to answer that question in the chat. You can certainly try to answer that question. But the reason I bring that up is because as a behaviorist, as a health behaviorist from background in psychology, is because there's been a, a conditioning that we've all gone mm -hmm. through to really think about bacon and eggs being part of an all-American breakfast. But what we know, and I always use this in class when I talk to my class, there, bacon and eggs is no better for you and no more nutrient dense than having a kale salad with a piece of poached tuna on it for breakfast right? Mm -hmm. We've been conditioned behaviorally to buy into the fact that these are the things that are on an all-American breakfast, right? And, and that's done through the construct in which we live. Mm -hmm. So you're told that you need to drink lots of milk. You're told that you need to eat lots of meat. You're told, and, and you're told from the time that you're born until the time that, you're, that you die. And if you look at psychology, we can tell you through operant conditioning is this is the way that we get people to behave in certain ways, right? So when we start to want to try to change that behavior process in ourselves, we have to realize that a lot of the information that's been provided to us, it's not that it's bad. It's not that bacon and eggs are horrible for you and you're going to die a miserable death if you eat bacon and eggs, right? Mm -hmm. It just means that it doesn't necessarily have to be what you eat for breakfast, right? Or the notion of, well, I have to eat meat so I can get good protein. That's not true either, mm -hmm. right? So there's options that we have, and part of being able to make good choices is to have a certain level of education about the choices that are available. That's one piece. That's why we talk about health education. And then the mm -hmm. other piece is then afterward, armed with the knowledge, then being able to take that knowledge and change our intention, our behavioral intention based on our new knowledge. Right. So mm -hmm. if we know, let's say, for example, we have somebody in the audience today and they learn a few things and they're like, OK, I've learned some really cool stuff. I'm going to start trying these new things. Well, they've yeah. taken their new knowledge and now they're applying that knowledge to their behavioral intention. And it won't be easy because we have, we're habitual creatures. So we like to establish patterns. And once we, we establish do like that our habits. pattern, yeah, it's hard to break, right? But those are the things that we have to think about when we think about the way that we eat. The one thing that you brought up earlier that I wanted to comment on is that you talked about buying food in bulk, right? So you're exactly right. A bag of of beans, dry beans, and a bag of rice per volume is much cheaper than a bag of potato chips. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot better for you, right? And it lasts longer. And it lasts It won't longer. go stale the same way and exactly. it's easier to store. Exactly. But we have to be able to, because there's no perfect world or perfect scenario in this, we have to be able to realize that that choice becomes a priority and we're willing to do what's required in order to make that happen for ourselves. So that might mean mm -hmm. that Food preparation takes a little bit longer, right? 
Um, and sometimes we'll get com uh, conversational points about like, well, what if I don't have a lot of time? What is a, a good way to go about that? Well, mm -hmm. you know, minute rice is, is a much better choice than a bag of potato chips, right? Um, it's going to be a little mm -hmm. bit more expensive than a bag, of, a bag of unprepared rice because obviously a lot of the preparation is done for you. And so you're paying for that convenience. Uh, so I think yeah. the biggest thing that we, we have to think about when we do this is being armed with the knowledge that we need to make better choices, but then being, but then be willing to take that information and use it to make the better choice. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's too, it's kind of, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but kind of what we're talking about today is these two main factors, which is the knowledge and the understanding, which it's hard to change our behavior if we don't have, if we don't understand it. We as humans, we need to understand and grasp a concept to be able to kind of integrate it in a lot of ways that helps us. But then the next piece is making sure that we take that knowledge and actualize it and put yes. and put it into practice, which is kind of hard. And so I know very hard. We're, <laughs> we're getting into so many good things and I feel like we could talk literally for the rest of the day. So um, before, while I'm thinking about it, if you are watching this now or on the re repay, replay later, can you please comment if you would like to have Dr. Dustin Morris back with us at some point, and maybe we can do another, um, maybe another live or, a, you know, a specific topic, just because I feel like we're getting into so much information. So I'd love to hear from our people, you know, hey, yeah, let's do another one. Or this is something, you know, it'd be great to specifically speak on. And then I can kind of use that and you and I can talk more about that as well. Yeah, um, you know, I think that's a great point, Susanna. I mean, I, I would be happy to come back if the audience wants me, I think really being able to uh, talk about mindful eating you know, this internal mm. processing that we have to go through each, each one of us goes through an internal processing as it's, as it relates to what foods we choose to put in our mouth every day. Mm -hmm. And so being able to talk about what that process looks like, right? So we've certainly identified there are certain barriers that are very real. We can live in areas where there's food deserts, insecurities. We don't have a lot of choices, but we can still go into those stores and pick foods that are better for us than some that are not. The mm -hmm. question then becomes, why are we not doing it that way, right? So how do we get into this internal processing for ourselves and become very real with ourselves about why we're making the choices that we make to eat the foods that we do? Um, and there's a lot of things that can go into that. So we certainly could have a conversation about that as well. That would be awesome. I definitely, again, if y'all are interested, please put it in the, the comments or let your well-being coach know because um, I work closely with all of them. Um, so. Oh, we're, we're basically out of time and I just, I want to keep talking, but I feel like if we start a conversation now, we're just going to keep going. So um, just for today, we're going to kind of bring today's Wellbeing Wednesday to a close. <laughs> um, and again, if you're watching this on the replay and you have specific questions or something like that, please feel free to still put them in the comments. I do come back and check those. Um, and then if we want, we can also bring you back, Dr. Dustin Morris, to join us for another conversation if your schedule allows. Um, and we really, really thank you for taking this time uh, to come on and just chat with us and share your your personal knowledge and also your professional knowledge as well, just on this very important topic that is just so common that we hear from the people that we work with. So I think that this is really, really great. And I really appreciate your time. With well, it's my pleasure. I, these conversations help me as much as I hope they help other people because it reminds me of the things that I continue to need to do in order to, to try to optimize my life and my well-being. So I appreciate having the opportunity to come and speak with everybody today. Yeah, that's why I love kind of doing this whole well-being thing because it's a continuous circle as I'm sharing it with somebody else. It's reinforcing it for me. Half the time I'm like, I hope other people are getting as much out of these well-being Wednesdays as I personally am because I feel like I get to learn something new every time. So it's a lot of fun. And again, thank you so much. And for okay. those of you who are watching, make sure if you haven't already to follow Curricula Concepts on Facebook and Instagram, we do post when our next Wellbeing Wednesdays are. We share different well-being tips as well. Um, and if you like today's show, please feel free to share it with your friends, family, coworkers, bestie, next door neighbor, whoever wants to hear about it. And if you're a child care provider and want to learn more about enrolling in Be Well Care Well, you can um, visit the link that I believe is down in the chat, um, but it's curriculaconcept.com slash Be Well Care Well. And this has been another Wellbeing Wednesday. I'm your host, Susanna Creed, and I'm wishing you all well for the rest of the week. Everybody Bye have all. a great day.